achievements, trophies. They've been around for quite some time now, and when you take into consideration how long mainstream video gaming has been around, it's safe to say that achievements and trophies have been around for a decent amount of time. They're not as new as you might think. The Xbox 360 introduced it with its initial launch with the PS3 launching sometime after. Usually, they'll arrive with a clever little title making your journey that much more fun. But this wasn't always the case. These days, achievements and trophies are fun to hunt for, collect, and find. In the early days of achievements, they were pretty straightforward, basically just letting you know what milestone you've accomplished. I wanted to take a look at some of the most creative achievements or trophies that I've come across in the wild, ranging from the easiest to accomplish to some of the more clever or trolliest. Starting with something easy, the fourth wall breaking, self-aware anti-hero, the merc with the mouth himself, Deadpool. This game starts off with Wade Wilson relaxing in his apartment, waiting to hear back on his pitch for his own video game. Being self-aware that he is, he rewrites the script and hires Nolan North to voice him. But it wouldn't be a Deadpool game without some fourth wall breaking. As soon as you press the button to get him off the couch, you're presented with an achievement entitled, The First One Is Free, followed by, and so is the second one. Here's another one. Oh, so it's gonna be one of those games, huh? Some simple achievements, but taken into consideration the context of the game, they're very well placed nods to the character source material. Moving on to another easy achievement. This one isn't as easy as pressing a button to get off the couch. Sunset Overdrive is an open world action adventure game, with the main character being nimble enough to climb up walls, grind on rails, as well as power lines. You control the main character, which you can customize to your liking, and the story begins as a massive party is overrun by mutated people who consumed a new energy drink. Your character is unaffected, as it turns out you're only working as a cleaning crew during this party. The achievement is received when you complete the tutorial and survive Horror Night, with the easy achievement piggybacking on the first achievement. So you actually receive this one entitled Overachiever for receiving an achievement. You get an achievement for receiving an achievement. That pretty much sets the tone for what to expect from the silly nature of this game. Moving on to some achievements that the typical gamer would perhaps try to avoid. Guitar Hero 3 had a way of rubbing salt in your wounds if you failed to complete a song. If you make it past 90% of a song and fail, you not only face the booze of the crowd and the massive failure presented to you, but you're also gifted a lovely achievement entitled, Almost Got It. Keep failing the same song multiple times and the game is kind enough to present you with another achievement, blowing it. Thanks Guitar Hero, as if I didn't already feel bad enough for sucking at this game. Sony exclusives like to get in on the joke too, as when God of War received an HD remaster for PS3, some rather clever trophies were added to this game. After you beat the Hydra in the beginning chapter of the game, we find Kratos in his quarters on the ship as he awaits his arrival to his next destination to begin his mission of defeating Ares. But he's not alone. If you jump on the bed, you'll get the notification to press a circle button to initiate a quick time event. Upon completing this task, you'll get the trophy for rocking the boat, a trophy you can very easily avoid. Another one that is not quite as easy to avoid, as you play through the game, you can expect to die a lot. But die enough times in the same spot and the game will be sure enough to ask if you want to lower the difficulty a tad, at which point you'll also receive the trophy for said accomplishment. Resident Evil is one of my favorite games. When it received an HD remaster of the GameCube version, I was super excited to see this game updated in all its glory. That is, until you remember that this game tends to be a bit hard. Capcom is well aware of this and as you die for the first time you're presented with the achievement, get used to it because, well, seriously, get used to it. Resident Evil 4 would also feature an achievement that you might otherwise avoid. In Chapter 1-3, we, as Leon, see a couple of Ganados feeding a local cop to a large lake monster, also known as Del Lago. If you head over to the pier and try to attack the monster by shooting the lake, you won't do any damage to the fish, but you'll definitely get its attention.
in keeping with the topic of zombies, Lollipop Chainsaw took us on an adventure where we controlled Juliet Starling as a high school cheerleader whose school is overrun with zombies on her birthday. But we quickly learned that Juliet is no ordinary cheerleader. She is also a trained zombie hunter. Being a badass zombie hunter doesn't necessarily take away from the fact that she's a high school cheerleader, as her mannerisms, bedazzled chainsaw, and outfit makes it very obvious. If you place the camera too low, Julia will do her best to avoid anything from being seen. But leave the camera low for too long, you're rewarded with an achievement, you perv. But games will also contain some achievements that don't outright make themselves known, and you'll have to search for them, or otherwise stumble upon them by sheer luck. NetherRealm Studios, the team behind the Mortal Kombat and Injustice games, love hiding easter eggs. In Injustice 2 specifically, there's a lovely callback to NRS's other fighting title. Knock your opponent into the marquee at the theater three times and the letters will fall off spelling out a new phrase. Also, if you get a bit overzealous in a match and start feeling yourself so much that you feel the need to teabag your opponent, you'll be rewarded for this little pop-off with a snarky achievement. One of my favorite game series would have to be the Bioshock series. All the games were great in their own aspects. But, with the second game taking place quite some time after the events of the first game, the developers added a nice little callback to the first entry. While exploring Ryan amusements, you'll come across an exhibit of Andrew Ryan as he sits at his desk. But off in the corner, there's also a golf club. Grab the club with your telekinesis plasmid and shoot it back at Ryan's head as a callback to the first game and you'll get an achievement. If you haven't played the game and don't get the significance of this, I highly recommend doing so. Well, there were a few of my favorite achievements that I've received during my time as a gamer. This clearly isn't all the fun ones, so feel free to let me know of any that you liked for any reason. As usual, please like and subscribe. If you haven't already, feel free to follow me on Twitter and Twitch. This has been... Ah!